In this short tutorial, I'm going to build on top of the watershed, the subbasin that I created in the previous tutorial. So if you have not watched that previous tutorial, tutorial number 01, I highly recommend watching that before watching this one, specifically if you're new to HydroCAD. All right, so we created the subbasin, and let me show you, we defined area, time of concentration, and we created a name for it, and we defined the rainfall for it as well. So in this video, I'm going to talk about more advanced features of HydroCAD when it comes to hydrologic modeling. And I'm going to start with the area. In the previous video, you saw that we only had one acre for this watershed, and the curve number for this watershed was uniform 84. Now, I'm going to assume that I, my watershed is not uniform. I have half an acre that is a parking lot and I have another half an acre that is consisted of all the roofs of the buildings that are there. So I need to change so the total area would be two acres. And now I need I need to define curve number for these areas. So this one I am going to say that this is going to be a park. The land use condition is going to be good and the soil group is going to be C. So let's double click on that. And I think open space should be right over here. Yes. So open space in good condition and land use or hydrologic soil group of 74, which is C. Double click on that. That's over here. All right. We have half an acre and that's going to be a paved parking. So I'm going to double click and uh, find paved parking lots over here. All right. And you can see for all of it is 98. So it doesn't matter which one you click on. I'm going to click on this. And another half an acre, I'm going to assume that that's uh, roofs of the buildings uh, in that area. So again, I'm going to find roofs over here. And you can see it's again 98, so it doesn't matter which one you click on. I'm going to click on this one. Okay, so HydroCAD automatically created a weighted curve number based on all the numbers that I put over here. And you can see that the weighted curve number is based on the area, and it's 86. Okay. Now, the other thing that I want to um, change is time of concentration. Originally, this value was based on direct entry, but now I want to have different time of concentration for this watershed, for the subbasin that I have. For every line item in the area tab, I need to define a time of concentration. So first of all, I'm going to remove this direct entry over here. I'm going to clear the table and then double click and for my one acre area which was park I'm going to define the lag curve number method this is a very common method to use another the velocity NRCS method you need to define sheet flow shallow concentrated flow and channel flow so if you have pipe you can create a pipe channel so on and so forth but for the sake of this video I'm going to use the lag curve number method which is a very common method in hydrology as well so I'm going to double click on that perfect so this is for the area that has a one acres of land and it's a park I know that the hydraulic length I have measured using GIS is 60 feet and the average slope is half a percent the contour length and contour interval if you have it it's good if you don't have it it's not uh, mandatory to put that okay I'm gonna click on that and it creates the time of concentration for me right over here the other thing that I want to calculate is time of concentration for the paved parking lot so again double click on that uh, I'm gonna create the lag method and the hydraulic length for this half an acre parking lot is going to be 20 feet and the average slope of the parking lot is one percent okay and then eventually I'm going to click on the third row and define time of concentration for the roofs the area was half an acre the length would be very short is 10 and the average slope is going to be uh, six percent okay so these are the defined time of concentrations for this area that I have. You can obviously go and change these values that you have over here just for the sake of changing it. Let's change this length instead of 60 to maybe 250. And you can see that the time of 
the concentration is getting increased as well. Okay. It's very common in different jurisdictions and different states that you have a minimum number for time of concentration. Specifically, when you're talking about the roofs, some of these time of concentrations do not make sense when you do the calculations. That's why you have a minimum time of concentration stipulated by the state or by the jurisdiction that you're doing stormwater modeling. Okay, I'm going to apply this and um, click OK and show you when you go to this calculation setting and when you go to the advanced, you can set the minimum time of concentration. And this will override any calculations of time of concentration. So I'm going to put this number to five minutes because where I live, the time of concentration less than three min less than five minutes is not recommended. And then click apply and OK. Now, although the time of concentration for row number two and row number three is the calculated version is less than five minutes, the program that HydroCAD uses is going to prioritize that five minutes over these two. So essentially, it's going to override 1.1 and 0 0.3. And instead of these two numbers in calculations, the value of five minutes will be used because I define my minimum to be five minutes. All right. So now that we have time of concentrations and areas calculated, now it's time to change our rainfall. So apply and OK. Now we're going to click on the calculation settings again and under rainfall, we want to define some design rainfalls. Normally, if you're working on a design project and you want to find a design rainfall for different return periods, let's say 10 year or 100 year, Atlas of NOAA Atlas 14 is what you use. This is NOAA Atlas 14 that you can find the value of design rainfall for anywhere that you want to. For example, if I want to put this in uh, Twin Cities area, about Twin Cities area, and then if I scroll down, you can see that for any given duration and for any given um, years, this is the return period, I can find the value of design rainfall. For example, for a 60 minute duration and then five-year frequency the value of rainfall that i need to use is 1.79 and this is in inches okay now you can change this to um, si units and so on and so forth but the good thing about hydrocad is that hydrocad gives you the ability to look up this value what do i mean by that okay so when you are in the rainfall setting you obviously can write your scenarios so remember in the previous video we defined two scenarios with two different rainfalls one and two okay now another way of finding the rainfall would be importing these rainfall events so when you click on this import rainfall event you can click on the lookup table and you can select the atlas 14 and based on the state that you're in so i'm gonna for example find minnesota over here mn and then the county that I'm in, the county that I'm in is going to be Hennepin County. So finding Hennepin County right over here. And then you can see all these values are over there. So when I click OK, and then it's type 2, then OK, perfect. Now, you can see that all these rainfalls from one year all the way to 100 year have been added right over here. So if I, for one year, the depth is 2.48. I can change this to 25 year and obviously the depth is going to get larger and larger. So these are all my rainfall scenarios based on NOAA Atlas 14. Remember that I'm using the storm type of 2 and 24 hour. If I want to change the duration from 24 hour, I need to rescale it manually from 24 hour to let's say 2 hours or 3 hours. Okay. Perfect. I want to have the 24 hour rainfall, so I'm going to go back to default. Another thing that I want to show to you when you click on view storm over here, you can see that this shows the distribution to me. This is an S curve distribution for 24 hours, and this is fraction of rainfall. So this number over here will be multiplied by the fraction rainfall depth to give us the distribution of rainfall over 24 hours. Hours. This is an S curve that shows you this is a cumulative value of rainfall. So if I want to have that 
value 5.34 times all of these I can click on current depth and you can see that I have this value you can have this in table as well and just to double check if I go all the way down the last value because it's cumulative it should be equal to the depth of rainfall that I get and you can see that it's over 24 hour now another thing that you can change is the increment of uh, your time interval so right now I have 0.1 or six minutes so I can change it like to 0.12 and this would be changed as well but 0.1 for the purpose that I'm using this would be good enough you can right click on this table and export it to a CSV file or you can right click on this graph and export it as an image so a lot of good options actually for you over here now if you don't want a 24 hour rainfall you can select a 12 hour rainfall or a 6 hour rainfall over here but if you want a number that is in between that or less than 6 hours then you need to manually change the store duration okay so now that I have all of these uh, design rainfalls let's see I'm gonna do the five year first and the depth of rainfall is 3.57 you want to make sure that you have enough time span over here. I'm going to change it from 0 all the way to 40. And this time increment over here is how the calculations are done and how your hydrograph is going to be printed. Okay. Then I talked about reports before and unit hydrograph. We're going to keep it as SCS. And remember that we changed the time of concentration minimum. So that's good. And I'm going to apply and click OK. Okay, now I have the five-year uh, scenario selected over here. So I'm going to actually click on 10-year scenario and run the model for the 10-year scenario. So the amount of rainfall, amount of the depth of rainfall is going to be changed. When you double-click on it, it's going to run. Obviously, we didn't get any errors or warnings over here. We're good. Some of the information is over here. We have a type 2, 24-hour rainfall. The depth of rainfall is over here the uh, runoff area is given the volume and the depth all is given to you and time of concentration perfect and the, the curve number the composite curve number is given to you as well when you click on summary it will give you a summary of the velocity in these different areas what method was used uh, the curve number so on and so forth Okay, very good information is provided to you. Um, obviously, you can, whenever, if you want to print the summary, you can print it or export it. And when you click on edit, you can change the time of concentrations and areas. By the way, take a look at it. The time of concentrations are um, automatically changed to what we set over here. Okay, time of concentrations, excuse me, that was the area. Time of concentrations are not automatically changed. In the program, it would be changed in the program because we set the minimum to be five minutes. Okay. Um, and this is what you have in the hydrograph. You can see it as 2D, or even you can see the hydrograph as a table. The numbers that are in bold over here, these are the, the um, essentially the peak of the hydrograph and the peak of the precipitation as well. Okay. So this was your... Um, hydrograph for 10 year you can see that the peak is 7.43 now if I change this to a 100 year automatically it changes this hydrograph for me and obviously the peak is higher as well okay and again we didn't experience any errors right over here okay so in this video you learn how to define a composite area when the curve number in the area is different from region to region and you learn how to select your design rainfall based on NOAA Atlas 14. Let me know if you have any questions and let me know if you want me to create videos on different topics um, in hydrology, hydrologic modeling, and specifically HydroCAD in this video.